Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'll show you two ways of creating long shadows in Illustrator. Before we get started with this tutorial, let's look and see what it is that we're trying to do. I have a very simple icon here and it has what is called a long shadow. These long shadows are shadows that extend from the shape all the way off the edge of whatever it is that it's on. Now I'm going to show you two ways of doing these long shadows. One of them is a very simple way, but I don't think it's quite as tidy. And if I were selling these as stock, for example, then I would go the extra step and create them just a little bit differently. So I'm going to start with the easy way and then go on to the other way, which is not difficult. It's just a smidgen more time consuming. So let's hide this and let's get started. To create my long shadow effect, I'm going to choose File and then New. I'm going to use a 1000 point square document. It's RGB and just click OK. And let's just bring that back here. I'm going to start with a rectangle the size of the artboard. So I'm just going to select over this and it's going to be black filled and no stroke. I'm going to lock this down so it's not going to move. Just makes life a little bit easier. Now we're going to use the rounded rectangle because I want a rounded square. So I'm going to hold the shift key as I drag out my rounded rectangle. Again, I want no stroke, but this time I want this sort of bright orange fill. And I want my corners to be more rounded. So I'm using Illustrator CC 2014. So I'm just dragging in on the rounded corner icon here to make my corners more round. For my icon, I'm going to use just the letters AI. So I'm just going to select my text tool, click here, type AI, select the text, and then I'm just going to make it larger. And I'm just using Shift and the up arrow key, and I want it to be really, really quite big. So I'm thinking something like about that size. Let's just move it down into position, and I'm going to make my font bold because that makes it nice and thick. I'm going to convert this to outlines for a couple of reasons, just because it's going to make the blend nice and easy to make, but also because I want to get rid of this dot. So I'm just going to click on this and keep clicking on it until the dot is isolated and I can just delete it. I'm going to replace it with a rectangle. And this is filled with black, so I'm just going to click here to exit isolation mode. Now my type needs to be white, so let's just go and select that again and let's make it white. So there's the text for my logo. I'm just going to position it nicely and I'm going to zoom out because I need to see more of the outside beyond my artboard for this next step. Now I need some more copies of this text. I need two more copies. So I'm just dragging and dropping this onto this new icon down here. But you could choose Edit Copy, Edit Paste in place if you like. That doesn't really matter. I'm going to turn off the topmost copy because that's going to be my text later on. I'm going to select these two copies. They're stacked on top of each other and I'm going to fill them with black. I'm just going back to my black text here. Now I'm going to deselect both of these and just select one of them and I'm going to move it. So I'm just going to pick this up and move it down here. But before I let go, I'm going to add the shift key to it because that's going to constrain it to 45 degrees. So this is at a 45 degree distance from this original shape. And now I'm going to make a blend from these two black copies or black pieces of text choosing the blend tool here. I'm clicking once on this shape, once on that shape, and here is my blend. And this is going to be my shadow. Now I'm going to double click on the blend icon here because I want to make sure that I've got a good blend. At the moment I've got a specified distance of four points and I can actually see the little jagged edges here. So I'm going to reduce this to an absolute minimum value of one point so the edges are much smoother. Now because this is going to be my shadow, it needs to be transparent. So I have it selected. I've got the blend selected. So here in the Appearance panel, which we can get to by choosing Window and then Appearance, I'm going to click on Opacity. And I want to reduce the opacity to about 20%. 
and I'm also going to use a blend mode. This is the blend mode list here and I'm going to choose multiply because that's a slightly darkening blend mode. So this is going to blend the shadow into whatever it is underneath at an opacity of 20% but a multiply blend mode. Now the reason why I'm using black for my shadow is that that means later on I can change this orange to anything that I like and this shadow is going to work with it. The shadow is not going to need any alteration at all. So now let's put our text back on top and let's just click away from it. So we've pretty much got our long shadow effect. The only problem is we've got all this garbage hanging out here. Well, the solution to that is to take this rectangle and make a duplicate of it. Then I'm going to move one of these copies of this rectangle, this orange square if you like, above my blend. I'm going to click to select both of these. So I'm clicking and then shift clicking. So both of these are selected, the rectangle and the blend. And I'm going to choose Object, Clipping Mask, Make. And the clipping mask is just clipping the long shadow to the shape, to that rectangular shape. Now that's one way to do this and it works. It's unarguably it works and it's fine. But you know, if this were me and I were selling this as stock, I would be really unhappy selling somebody a stock image that had a clipping mask in it and a blend. I just think it's not tidy. And I think that if I were buying stock, I would expect the long shadow to be actually a shape. So that's the alternative way of doing this is to make a shape for your long shadow and it's not that much more difficult than what we've done here. So let's go and see how we do that. For this alternate method of creating long shadows, I'm going to do exactly as I did before and create a brand new document. It's a thousand points by a thousand points in size and it's an RGB document. Again, I'm creating a rectangle the size of the artboard and I'm just going to fill it with black with no stroke. And I'm going to lock it down so it's not going to move. The next thing I need is my rounded rectangle to make my square. I'm holding the shift key as I drag to make this, hold the space bar just to reposition it. I'm going to drag in on the corners and then fill it with our orange color. Now I'm going to create my type, so I'm just going to click here and type my AI. Select the type and then just make it really, really big. So we're aiming for around five to 600 points here. It's closer to 600 going to make it bold type and I need to do all these type things and get my type organized because the next step is going to create outlines of it. So with my type selected I'm choosing type and then create outline. So this is no longer editable text. So I'm just going to keep clicking here until I isolate my dot, remove my dot and replace it with a rectangle. And because I've got my guides turned on here, it's really easy for me to create the right shape that's going to be exactly the same size as the eye itself. So here we are, let's get out of isolation mode. Here is my text layer and I'm going to make two copies of that just by dragging and dropping it onto this icon, but I could do edit, copy, edit, paste in place. I just think that dragging it's a whole lot easier. So I filled the top well, I thought I had. No, let's grab this topmost layer and let's fill it with white and then let's just hide it. So I have two more copies of my text. I'm going to select one of those copies and I'm dragging on it with the Move tool. But before I do, I'm actually going to size this down a little bit so I can see what I'm doing. Dragging it down here and I'm holding the shift key as I do that to make sure that it's constrained to this 45 degree angle. The 45 degree angle in this direction down towards the bottom right of the shape is typical of long shadows. I have the blend tool selected, click on one of my text objects, click on the second to create my blend. Now so far this is the same process that we used to create the first of our long shadows. I'm not going to go ahead now and blend my blend because we're actually going to be tossing the blend later on. I'm going to click here on the pen tool and I'm going to make sure that 
I don't have anything selected because I want to be drawing in red. So I'm just going to select red right now just so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to start creating a shape that is going to be my long shadow. So I'm just clicking here and because I have a regular shape and because we've got this blend underneath, everything's just snapping really nicely. So I'm just clicking around my shape to create a shape that is the shape of the blend. Now if I just click up here, you can see I'm going to miss this part of the A. don't want to do that, so I'm just going to click here and click here. I could have fixed it up later on, but I just wanted to make sure I got it right first time if possible. Let's just zoom in here and let's just check these points. I want to make sure that I'm bang on these points and I am. Everything looks really good with one exception. I think I've missed this line a little bit. So I'm just going to adjust this up and this one I've missed this bit as well. So let's just zoom out and see what we've done. What I've done is I've created my blend as I would have for the previous way of creating long shadows and then I've used the blend as a indicator of exactly the kind of shape that I need to be my long shadow. So here is my blend here and now because I've got my shape I'm just going to trash it. So goodbye blend, it's totally gone. And here is the shape that I need for my long shadow. So let's just with the shape selected, let's make sure we have it selected, let's just go and fill it with black. And then let's go and drop the opacity of it and blend it with the multiply blend mode. So because the shape is selected, let's go to the bottom of the appearance panel, click this opacity setting here, and we're going to wind that down to about 20%, something like that. We're going to change this blend mode to multiply. And if we were to move this path below our text, then we would have the same long shadow this time as we had previously. All we need to do now is to get rid of the excess. And we're not going to use a clipping path now because we've just got a simple shape here. We're just going to cut away the bit we don't want. So I'm going to grab my orange rectangle and duplicate it. I'm going to select one copy of my orange rectangle and the path here that I've created as my long shadow. So I've got both these pieces selected and I'm going for the pathfinder. Because what I want to do is keep just the bit where this orange shape and this long shadow shape intersect. So I'm just going to click here on intersect. And there is my long shadow. So I'm going to click away from it. So this is the exact same end result, only this time I've got my text here as a group. I've got a path for my long shadow and my orange background and my black background for my artboard. So everything is a lot less complex here than it was in the original. Now these long shadows, this shape for the long shadow will just take you like a few seconds to create. It's not rocket science, it's not difficult to do, but I think that if you're selling these for stock this is a far better way of approaching the task and you've got a shape for your long shadow instead of a blend that has a clipping mask on it. This is our uh, clipping mask blend and you can see even as I mouse over it everything's flashing on and off so if you were selling this as stock somebody would be looking at this going oh what's going on here well here in the second one it's very different you can see that the shadow the long shadow is just this shape things are a lot easier perhaps to understand so there are two ways of creating your long shadow effect in Illustrator I'm Helen Bradley, thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more video tutorials here on my YouTube channel. And consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.